Hi, it's Sarah here from So Sarah Style. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're well. Today, um, I am talking about my So Frugal makes, and also I've got a mini haul from the Stitch Festival. I was hoping to do two different, two separate vlogs, but it just hasn't happened this week. So um, you've got um, a, a bog off, or shall we say, <laughs> vlog off this week. Um, so we've got two vlogs for the price of one. Um, so I'll start off with my So Frugal makes. It's um, it's a bit of a mixed bag, which I find actually sometimes the case with these. I had huge uh, plans of making lots of different drapey tops. Well, I wasn't going to make all of them, to be honest, tops and dresses, but I absolutely definitely wanted to make the bias, the Hannah bias cut dress from Mood, Pat Mood Fabrics, which I have done. I'm actually wearing it at the minute and I'm wearing it with the closet core t-shirt, which was also a plan to do. Um, Sorry, I thought somebody had come in then. <laughs> Everybody's at home. and um, But I actually prefer to wear the T-shirt over the bias cut dress. The bias cut dress isn't a disaster by any means, but I'm not sure that it goes um, particularly well. The, the T-shirt's quite boxy and the dress is quite fitted. So um, I'll sh I'm going to insert some footage um, a little bit later. I'll do a bit of a dress up, as somebody called it. It made me laugh in the comments. Um, so I've done some dress ups for you today. And... Um, Oh, that that will be coming a little bit later. So yeah, the the dress I am pleased with. There are a couple of issues with it because I, I, as I as I said, the toile I made with the facing, and um, I found on Tasuti Patterns their Sadie slip dress. They had instructions for how to put um, bias a bias tape finish with it. So I've I've tried that and. It's it's okay. It's not massively successful. It's a little bit gapy under the arms, but I'll show you that um, a little bit later. Other than that, I'm actually really pleased with it. It's it's a nice pattern. As for the closet core tee, I absolutely love this pattern. It goes together beautifully. It's a really nice shape. Again, I'll put some pictures in. Um, really, really, really pleased with this. I did a toile. I know it's mad. I've already made it, and I did another toile of the t-shirt. Um, but just to check the fit before I cut into this fabric because I do love this fabric. Although that reminds me just indulge me for a second because i just need to show you this pattern matching there you go how about that how perfect is that oh look and a thread tail as well there's always thread tails um that side's not quite so good but you know you just have to show off the best your best side don't you um so really pleased with that so those to be honest were the only two patterns out of everything that i did manage to make i'm still really really want to make the um the salute blouse which was the cow neck blouse from mood patterns however there is another challenge coming up next month well very shortly and i'm going to throw that one into there so hopefully might be able to make the salute blouse for the so april blouse 24 challenge i hope i've got that right if not then i'll put it on the screen um that um gabrielle from the cloth edit and um ruan are running this april so that's exciting so that could possibly be one of the blouses that i make um so that was as i say that was it for the actual so frugal itself this pattern behind me is um a frugal make as well this is the peppermint paddington top and um, it's from Peppermint Magazine. And I think now, obviously, when I bought that, that was free, but I think it's sort of a pay, as, um, pay what you can sort of basis. I absolutely adore this top. I timed myself. I did a, a sort of a bit of a sewing bee and I think I got it done in four hours from printing or something ridiculous like that. And I absolutely love these little vintage buttons that I've put down the back. It's all completely fake. The, I, I made the placket because I like I like the style of that. But um, none of the buttons are operational because I don't I don't need to be. So if you do make that, I really wouldn't worry about um, doing all the buttonholes and stuff. So as I say, I didn't I didn't um, I didn't do any of them. So um, what I'll do now is I'll put in some footage of me with showing you the bias cut dress and hope it all makes sense because. Um, I have just filmed it and I really didn't know what I was talking about. So <laughs> I'm going to put it in anyway. And um, if you've got any questions, just ask me. But um, yeah, on the whole, I'm really pleased with um, both patterns. If I do make the dress again, I probably will. Um, I don't know actually whether I'll use the facing or not. I've done the bias binding. The bias binding was easy. But as I say, I don't know whether that's um, the Hannah bias cut dress is a slightly different shape to the Sadie and the Tasuti Sadie. So it might be that actually the bias binding works better with the Sadie than the, the hand, than the bias cut dress. I don't know. It's just a bit wonky under the armpits, but have a look at this and, and you'll be able to see. 
so this is it on its own excuse the bra straps i haven't had a strapless bra um yes it's fine it will it will work well i think um the one thing that i was saying uh, was the bias binding is quite loose under the armpits which obviously is more obvious when i haven't got a t-shirt on but i will show you um, a little bit more detail and i'll just go and pop the t-shirt on so you can see that as well so this is it with the closet core t-shirt and I quite, I quite like it with the t-shirt actually, I don't mind it. It's, as I was saying, it's quite loose underneath, but when you've got the t-shirt on, it, it doesn't really matter at all. It's not, it's not gaping or anything because obviously the t-shirt fills that gap. So um, yeah, I think it works quite well. I think obviously it's a, I need a bit of a sway back or something going on around the back that isn't quite right, but um, it flows quite nicely and um, yeah, the fit is fine. So. I'm not unhappy with it with the closet core t-shirt as well so it sort of works so i think this is the way that i prefer to wear it actually so just a, uh, the closet core t-shirt and it just looks like a, a bias cut skirt with it then um if i wanted to um all that it's quite boxy at the moment which is fine but if i wanted to i could try and get a bit more shaping in it with a little trick hang on a second um if i remember rightly it's just to twist the front of the t-shirt get an elastic band or hair bobble or whatever Put that round there and then just tuck it under um so you can rearrange it how you want to but it just gives just gives a little bit more interest and a bit more shape to it really so that's another way of of wearing it so there you go there's a little tip don't say you don't get anything for free on this channel okay so i'm back now with my stitch festival hat on so that was so frugal and um i just wanted to show you some of the things that i bought at the stitch festival so i went last weekend and um as predicted it was hugely busy i did enjoy it i what i enjoyed was seeing people to be honest and catching up with people um i know um there have been so many amazing vlogs that have gone out so i won't um go through the whole day because a i'm useless and had no pictures anyway and b to be honest I kind of I think you've probably seen it all you've had a flavor of, of what it was about so there were like I say so many fabulous um people there that um friends and new people that I met it was a really really lovely day but if I'm completely honest I found it quite overwhelming in terms of how busy it was so um it was yeah it was it was a mixed day I really wasn't in the right frame of mind for fabric buying a I don't particularly need any fabric obviously and b you, I just could I just couldn't sort of I didn't know I didn't need anything I didn't know what I wanted couldn't really get to the stalls I did manage to get a couple of bits though don't worry too much um I'll just show you those now um well I'll show you those in a second I actually ended up wearing the um, the camo trousers. I'll put in a, a picture of me. This is one of the very rare pictures of me. This was taken at the very glamorous Euston station when we arrived. Um, I wore my cream jacket and um, my camo trousers and I wore the corsage for half of the day. Uh, I ended up feeling a little bit like a spare guest at a wedding, to be honest. So the corsage was, was um, jettisoned halfway through the day. Um, but yeah, I was really, really happy in it because it was comfortable and uh, and I took the jacket off as well halfway through the day because it was so flipping hot in there. Um, and then underneath, I wore this, um, which was inspired by Sequin Girly Creates. This is the DP Studio, the French pattern company, Le 004 top. And if I can, I'll just show you here. Um, it's all very, very drapey. I've still got my uh, bias cut dress on <laughs> underneath, so it's actually supposed to go with trousers. Um, but I really like this. It's got the um it's got lots of um gathering under the bust and it's bat wing and then it's huge pattern pieces and then um can, I, can you see probably there it's sort of nice and baggy along the back um so gathering across the back as well i just love that sort of poofy shape i hope you can see properly um and um yeah so the idea is also that it's got some pleats big sort of scoop pleats in the arms this was made literally about i don't know half past 10 the night before i was going to the stitch festival and um obviously i was very tired it was dark and i was just whizzing through without probably 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 without looking at the instructions properly so i managed to sew the pleats up so what i've got is a huge lump underneath of fabric which is supposed to be scooped out so I need to get this unpicked and, and have a look at exactly what it is that I've done wrong because it's not it's just not working for me so as I say it was a real rush job but it's given me a flavour of what the top's like and I actually really really love it so it was made out of this fabric 
which I showed a few vlogs ago from the rag market and it went with the rest of the outfit which was sort of the whole point of it really so what did I buy not a lot as I just said um the first uh the first stall that I went to I saw this propped up at the back and um I was looking for something for theatre trousers although to be honest I think I've probably made enough theatre trousers for a while but I came across this the Pigeon Wishes stand and it's a brown leopard and it's a Japanese linen it's absolutely beautiful it's slightly narrow um, but the idea I think I'm not going to make any theatre trousers it's a mid well it's fairly it's a fairly it's not a heavy linen but it's a really lovely quality so I'm going to make another fibre mood K dress with um, a brown sort of brown t-shirt to go underneath or actually in the summer well, hey, I might not wear anything underneath it. So um, that is going to be a K dress. Absolutely love that. The Pigeon Wishes um, stand was, was understandably busy. It's always busy, isn't it? So I had to queue for ages for there, but it was worth it to get that because I've been on the lookout for some brown leopards. So I love that. And then a little bit later on, um, I came across this. And now you're going to think this is a little bit weird, but let me explain. I live in the landlocked Midlands, but I am obsessed with the sea. Anyone who knows me knows how much I love the sea. And at one point, some point in the future, I would love to live by the sea. So this was, um, obviously it's a quilting cotton um, and it's got all sorts of um, phrases on. Let the sea set you free. Um, what does this one say? Let your dream set sail. That one even says live by the sea. So I know it's a little bit cheesy, but I love it. So I was with um, Adele at the time and she she said, well, what are you going to make with that? I said, well, I think I'm going to make a jacket. And she said, actually, that would be a good idea. And why don't you think about putting um, some denim with it? So when I got home, I found I've got this denim chambray, which is um, relatively lightweight. It's a similar weight to that. Um, so the plan is to chop chop it up, chop the squares up and then um, patchwork them together, but sort of slightly randomly. It, it's all a bit geometric for me, so I want to make it look more organic and then make it into the handbok vest by sewing therapy. Now, actually, that's a free pattern. So um, I'll put a picture in here and it's a really lovely reversible vest. So um, I could wear it with these on the outside one day or if I felt that was a bit cheesy then I could just turn it into a denim vest gorgeous reversible wrap um, vest which I think will be really handy so that was the plan for that one so that's going to require a little bit of patchworking so I need to find the time to do that and um, then the other thing that I bought was um, one sec it's just behind the camera this oh this silicon hemmer from um, generates and um, I have got a, a hemmer a sort of a, a heat proof hemmer but this one's got all the holes for the steam and it's got obviously the measurements and things so hopefully that should be handy I did ask Jen uh, when I bought it whether she's got any tips for how to not burn your fingers because I always do with the steam um, she suggested obviously use less steam which I guess yeah it does make sense and also she mentioned so I just thought I'd share the tip with you that she uses um, a little it's a mini iron from Aldi and she said that's absolutely brilliant for hemming and stuff so I will be having a look out for that next time I go to Aldi so I don't know what it looks like because I haven't seen it but I just thought I'd share that with you and then that was everything that I bought to be honest but then when we we're at Rainbow Fabrics um Becky found uh what Beck sews found some linen that she liked which was I don't think she bought it in the end but it was a navy um patterned linen and I said oh I might actually have that um, I'd already bought it to be honest I had a little sneaky look on Rainbow Fabrics don't need to tell you why I chose this colourway uh, surprise surprise but the idea with this one is to make um, the Tamarama set by Swimstar Patterns it's a really nice this is a relatively lightweight um, linen so I think for the summer that will make a really gorgeous Tamarama set so that to be honest I'm looking around that is that's it for me today. So um, that's the my So Frugal makes and also what I wore to the Stitch Festival and what I bought. So uh, I think I will leave you there and I will hopefully catch up with you soon. As I say, sew a, a blouse for April. So April 
so April blouse, should have looked that up before I said it, is coming up very soon so there will be a vlog for that and also I actually haven't managed to get my Closet Core Crew pattern made up this month, which is ridiculous because at the end of the day, it's a t-shirt. Um, but I think what I'll do is a double whammy next month. So I'm waiting to see what the new pattern is that will come out on the 1st of April. And um, hopefully it might go with the t-shirt and then I can make them both up together. So I've got the fabric for it. I just need to find time to do it. So in the meantime, I will catch up with you soon. Happy sewing. Take care. Bye.